Hey, hey, I'm Matt, and this is Digital Jedi Gaming. So I was chatting with my buddy 2 Loud Tech about our favorite PC ports, and it got me thinking, what if I had a dedicated handheld just for Portmaster? But then came the real question, which handheld should I use? Let's find out. So for Portmaster, I think the ideal device needs to be horizontal because most PC ports you run with it are going to assume a horizontal layer. It should have a good screen, you know, a decent resolution. For me, five inches with about a 16 by nine aspect ratio is perfect. And of course it needs good controls, especially the D-pad and the sticks because otherwise, what's the point, right? Now the Trimyard Smart Pro gets a lot of love for the community for this kind of setup. But I went with the RGB 10 Max 3. Let me tell you why. So both devices have a great five inch screen and they run different chipsets. The Trim UI uses an all winner A133P while the RGB 10 Max 3 is powered by a rock chip RK3566. They're both capable. They both offer similar performance and each comes with about a gig of RAM. But what really sets them apart for me is the feel, the overall user experience. The RGB 10 Max 3, man, it just clicks. Let me show you what I mean. The biggest difference for me, the sticks and the D-pad. First off, the RGB 10 Max 3 has full R3 and L3 support. The sticks have tighter control and just a better overall range of motion. And I'm just not a fan of the Vita style sticks on a Smart Pro. There's no R3 and L3. The range feels pretty limited. Now the D-pad on a Smart Pro, it's decent. It's smaller and has clicky dome switches. But the RGB 10's D-pad, it's bigger. It's membrane based. It's got more pivot. It just feels better to me. Both have solid face buttons. The Smart Pro uses dome switches while the RGB 10 uses membranes and I prefer the softer press on the RGB 10. The shoulder and trigger buttons are a bit bigger and deeper on RGB 10 Max, but yeah, they're also louder than the Smart Pros. Shape-wise, the Smart Pro leans towards the Vita style, while the RGB 10 feels more ergonomic in hand, and for me, it's just a big win. So for an operating system, the RGB 10 Max 3 comes with Rock Nix OS. It's super friendly, has customizable themes, and it's perfect for Portmaster right out of the box. The Smart Pro stock OS works, but it's pretty generic. To run Portmaster, you'll need a custom firmware like Crossmix or Newly, which does add cool features, but even then, it doesn't feel as polished as Rock Nix to me. The RGB 10 Max 3 is compatible with 1,020 of the available ports, while the Trimyard Smart Pro is only compatible with 778. Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, which happens to be one of my favorite games, for example, doesn't run on the Trimyard Smart Pro. So for all those reasons, I went with the Pro Kitty RGB 10 Max 3 as my dedicated Portmaster device. Now, let's talk Portmaster. So if you haven't tried Portmaster, it's hands down the easiest way to run native PC ports on Linux handhelds. There's no scripts, no hassle, just pick a game, hit install, and you're in. It even auto updates and recommends new games for you. Right now, there's over a thousand ports available. At the time of this recording, the count is at 1037 and it's split into two main categories, ready to run and files needed. Let's talk about it. So category one is ready to run games. Now ready to run games are just exactly that. Just install and play. Let's take a look at some of my favorites. Apotris. It's a modern take on Tetris with a really slick visuals and really nice tight controls.
Diablo. OG classic action RPG dungeon crawling at its best. Quake 1, one of the godfathers of FPS games. Still amazing today. Super Mario War. This is a fan-made multiplayer Mario deathmatch. It's total chaos and total fun. Celeste Classic, a beautifully challenging platformer with heart and precision. It was originally written for Pico 8, and now it's an awesome port. Category 2, Files Needed Games. These ports need additional game files, usually from a Steam or a GOG copy of the game or something from the developer's website. But don't worry, Portmaster explains it exactly what you need. It's super straightforward once you have the game installed on your computer. Once the files are in place, you're good to go. Here's a few standouts in this category that I love. Start off with a banger right off the bat, Bellatro. It's a deck building roguelike with a poker twist. One of the absolute best games of 2024. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. It's classic brawler action with pixel art goodness. Shovel Knight, Treasure Trove, legendary indie platformer with retro flair and it's one of my faves. Stardew Valley. This is a cozy farming slim with just tons of charm. Celeste, the full version. This is the expanded 2D, 3D version of Celeste with incredible level design and amazing storytelling and graphics. There's over a thousand amazing games on Portmaster and so many of them are just absolute bangers. If you're running on Linux-based handheld, there's no better way to experience native PC ports. Let me know in the comments, what's your go-to Portmaster device and what's your favorite port so far? Hey, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've got more retro handheld reviews and nerdy deep dives on the way. Again, I'm Matt. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and keep gaming.